the thing I love about sports, football in particular, is that not only is it exciting, but it's an opportunity for student athletes. By now you've heard the story of Jamal Speaks, a young man who grabbed national headlines after he was told he was ineligible to participate as a student athlete here at Baloo, despite overcoming tremendous obstacles and going through the requisite process. It's been a long, it's been rough. Like, it's been some bumps. It's been very challenging, you know, uh, uh, meeting a young man a year ago and, and you learn his story and know that he's been through a lot in the last few years. Um, to see him just grow as a young man in the last few months and uh, just do everything right, do everything you asked him to do, you know, get his grades up, show up every day, work hard, lead his team, um, you know, and, and get to a position where he can he get himself back on the field and create an opportunity. For many student athletes, sport is more than just a game. In many ways, it's a refuge. It's just my way out. Like, out of the Southeast Washington, D.C., this is what is going to make me successful in life. I went to the University of Richmond and, and, and I was affording education through athletics, through football. You know, and so the goal of me being the head coach here is to keep creating those opportunities and so keep allowing these young men to, to find a way to use this sport to open doors for themselves. Football, student, you got to have grades to go through the degree. You know, every day we talk scholarship, every day we talk academics, every day we talk SAT prep. Uh, we're going to use this sport to create more opportunities for ourselves. All parties now appear to be on the same page. Jamal is eligible and will be returning to the football field this Friday. But that begs the question, where was all the confusion? How did this happen? You had a governing body for a sport, deem a student uh, eligible to participate, and for whatever reasons of confusion, and let me just point, there was no confusion on our side. Whatever the confusion was, a decision was made uh, that uh, there was still some questions and concern lingering, uh, I think, a residency issue. Uh, Mr. Speaks uh, met all the eligibility requirements. He was informed by the LEA that he needed to get a waiver. So a, a waiver, he filed a waiver. Mr. Speaks, it's important to note, is 18. He is by right uh, his own educational decision maker. He, uh, at 18, came back into the district, enrolled himself as a homeless student, verified his residency, the LEA, the public school system did, uh, also the member school of where he was attending, uh, verified his residency. He met the definition of a homeless student. And uh, by rule, uh, in our transfer exceptions, if being uh, homeless is a reason for you transferring, then you're eligible to participate in athletics. So we told him he did not need a waiver and we deemed him eligible. We just did an eligibility finding uh, for him and deemed he was eligible to participate. And that was sent to the member school and to the LEA on August 29th. Ray went on to tell me how recent statutes regarding appeals may help to unblur lines and define a student athlete's rights. Prior to that, it was that was it, man, that was final. A student may believe that they are eligible the member school will ask the LEA, the LEA will say no, and that was it. A student had no appeal rights other than to go to DC Superior Court. By the time uh, it would get into the courts, uh, the season would be over. So the reason the student filed the uh, eligibility challenge in the first place would just be moot because he or she would no longer be able to participate because their season was over. What the new statute and the new rules do, it gives students and their guardians and parents appeal rights all the way up from the member school, to the LEA, to the state office, to a state athletics commission, and then and only then you can appeal that decision to the DC Superior Court. But there are many levels, and students now have the right, just like in any other jurisdiction in the country, uh, to appeal their uh, uh, eligibility decisions or their decisions, any decision made by a, uh, a LEA or a member school. Not only will Jamal have the opportunity to be a student athlete again, he does so knowing that he has a mountain of support at his back, his family, his community, his friends. It's just a blessing, it's a blessing. All the support I got, like my brothers, my teammates, my family, it's just a blessing. I'm just standing right here in the nut. Again, in a blue uniform. This was a, a prime example of how a community uh, rallies around uh, an issue or, or a student athlete. I think in the community at large, from just the neighbor next door to uh, the city council member, 
uh, to uh, all those folks uh, at different levels in government got a hold of it. It was an absolute full court press, so to speak, uh, to uh, get the student to where he needed to be to be eligible. He knows now he has a large support system and, and you know, there's a lot of people out there in his corner trying to, uh, that are trying to make sure he's doing well. A success story in the making. Jamal Speaks will take the field for Baloo Friday versus Roosevelt. I get excited when he walks out that door and he's fully equipped. Um, you know, he, he went through a lot to get back on the field. I mean, he hasn't played football since the middle of his sophomore year, so, I mean, it's exciting to see him out here and he's enjoying himself, man. He's having fun. He's getting the other young men excited. You know what I mean? So it brought a lot of good energy back to the team. We're excited to see him uh, do his thing on Friday night. Friday night, I'm going to show up and show out. The thoughts that's going to be running on my mind is end zone. And just as Jamal has been assisted, it is his intention to give back to those that follow. This is when I've been since a kid, Southeast. It's just a, a lot of stuff going, a lot of bad stuff. People don't really look at Southeast as a good. I just want to be a young black man coming out of Southeast, being successful. Actually, I'm going to be the first to actually graduate and go to college for my family. So it's like a, like a motivation for, for the younger underclassmen, our ninth graders, tenth graders, just like, if I could do it, you could do it. it it's, it's ain't, ain't nothing. Impossible is nothing. On behalf of the DCSAA, I'm Chad Ricardo.